Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this New Year's Watch Night service at the end of 2021 and at the beginning of a new year, 2022. All the different parts of the service will appear on the screen, and so please feel free to join in at home with all the parts that are in bold. Let's begin with a call to worship. What a difficult year this has been. So many things have happened or been cancelled. Some of them have been wonderful. Many, very sad. In all of this, we trust that our Lord has been with us, guiding, healing, comforting and rejoicing. Thanks be to God for his continual presence with us. Now we are on the threshold of a new tomorrow. We don't know what it will hold for us. In all of what is to come, we pray for grace to trust that our Lord will be with us, guiding, healing, comforting and rejoicing. Thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love and presence. Amen. Welcome to this time of quiet expectation. We have come here from extremely busy times. Come to find rest, come and find hope. This is the last night of the year. We do not know what is to come. Do not fear. Look with eager joy for the presence of the Lord in your life. Open our eyes, ears and hearts, O oh Lord, to receive your message of hope for us. Lord of the opening way, we bring to you this night our past with all that has happened in our lives, our hopes and our dreams, our successes and our failures, our gains and our losses. We bring to you our present, lives filled with exhaustion, wonder, fear, and concern. We come to you with our hearts open to receive your word for us, for the future. We want to be part of your new heaven and earth, to serve you by serving others. Speak to us, heal us, teach us, lead us. For we ask these things, in Jesus' name, amen. Perhaps you'd like to sing with me at home and think about how God is both the beginning and the end of all things. He knows everything and he's worthy of our praise. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega, we worship you, our Lord, you are worthy to be praised. We give you We give you all the 
let's bow our heads before God, who is Lord of all things, and bring him our prayer of confession. Lord, you have asked us to feed and give drink to those who hunger, to clothe those who are naked, to welcome the stranger, to visit those who are sick and imprisoned. When we look back on this year, we might be able to say that we did some of those things. We remember the enthusiasm with which we started out this waning year, ready to do your work and witness to your love. But you know how things got in our way. We allowed ourselves to be swallowed up by worries and fear. We placed comfort of self before service to others. We took the easy way out whenever we could, and you wept for us. Now we are on the brink of the new year. We cannot change what we did not do, but we can make a covenant with you to be your witnesses in our words, thoughts and deeds to your people, so that when you say, have you given food and drink to those who hunger and thirst? Have you clothed the naked, welcomed the stranger, visited the sick and imprisoned? We can respond with a joyful, yes, Lord, we have done these things with joy and love. Forgive us what we have not done. Inspire us to do what you would have us do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is making all things new. The past is over and done. It taught us many lessons. But God is the God of the future. New opportunities new hopes, new dreams, renewed vision. God dwells with us to be our God. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, our Lord, how incredible and magnificent is your name in all the earth. Your vo voice spoke the word of light and the light was given. Your heart shouted hope and love, and creation was born. Your tears cried torrents for your errant people, and your prophets boldly stepped forward to proclaim your presence. Your love streamed down, and Jesus the Christ came to us to heal, teach, guide, and bring us to you. Your power hovered over us, like a mighty flame, inspiring us to be your witnesses. How magnificent and wonderful you are, O oh Lord. And now the old is passing away, and a new heaven and earth are being born. Lord, we want to be ready to serve you in your new heaven and new earth. We need to let go of the disappointments and fears, and open our hearts to receive your love and blessings for us. This is a time of new beginnings. The past we cannot change. We can reflect on all that has happened and move on into new relationship with you. Let the light of your love shine on us that we may feel and know your powerful presence with us. Let the light of your love shine in us that we may be encouraged to use our gifts and talents to serve others. Let the light of your love shine through us, that others may come to know you. In this time of new beginnings, new hopes arise. Give us courage to reach out for the dreams and hopes. Give us confidence that we can accomplish much for you. Amen. When we are unfaithful, God himself is still faithful. He is the one we can always depend upon. Perhaps you'd like to join me at home in singing one of our favourite songs at Perry Rise and a great song for a new year. Faithful one. Faithful one, so unchanging. Ageless. 
as one. You're my rock of peace, Lord of all, I depend on you. I call out to you again and again. I call out to you again and again. You are my rock in times of trouble. You lift me up when I fall down. All through the storm, your love is the anchor. My hope is in you. Now we're going to have a reading from the first chapter of Mark and reading verses 1 to 11. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee, Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Welcome everybody to a new year. I wonder if as you enter this new chance at life, you feel as if you have a lot to keep up with, like keeping up with the Kardashians. Yet throughout the history of the church, we are called upon, following the celebration of the birth of Christ at Christmas, to reflect on our lives as Christians at the start of a new year. The new year is a time of resolutions to change our lives and pursue different things for a different result. Do you know, I was once very lazy about taking exercise, uh, particularly when I was living overseas, to the extent that I had constant back trouble. And I still recall making resolutions to take up exercise each new year. It was very hard. And some days I didn't want to do it. But eventually, after many years of struggle, I did take it up. And it was to my own benefit. And when I look back, I was so glad I did it. And the back trouble has pretty much been solved by keeping fit. Have you ever wondered why people make New Year's resolutions? Experts say that the desire to change our lives and pursue what is good and desirable is at the roots of New Year's resolutions. People make resolutions to try to change bad habits into good ones, like I did. And especially when life is not going the way you want, it's human nature to review and try to promise oneself to redouble our efforts and, do's better, and to do better. 
maybe this is the root of New Year resolutions. But our gospel reading, as recorded by St. Mark, may appear as a story to introduce John the Baptist and the, the baptism of Jesus Christ. And in a way, that is what it is. But let's think about another angle on this story, namely a story of lots of different people coming out from Jerusalem and the Judean countryside in an attempt to try and change their lives and make a resolution to do better. And everyone who responded to John's invitation was perhaps pointing to a new beginning for everybody that would really come not through anything John could do, but actually through the coming of Jesus Christ and the beginning of his ministry on the earth. Think about how St. Mark introduces John in his first chapter, verse four. He says, John appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Mark doesn't spend much time introducing John except to quote the prophet Isaiah, who predicted his coming, and to get straight to the point. John appeared in the desert and started preaching a baptism of repentance. That means turning right around and going the other way in order to be forgiven for our sins. This piece of information is relevant for our new year. And to understand why, let's remember some of the history of Palestine at that time. The Romans had come and colonized Israel, taken control of the Jewish people and their land, and had set up soldiers everywhere, including in the temple. The people of God realized that they themselves had not helped their situation by not following God's rules properly. They'd seen their situation deteriorate from bad to worse, and even to worship at the temple now required that they pay a tax to a foreign power to Caesar. This for them was proof enough that God had abandoned them. And so many knew that if a change was to come, they actually had to change their ways, make amends with God in order to see a better day and live a better life. It's a little bit like us being locked out of our churches as we have been because of the virus. There is undoubtedly a spiritual meaning to these things as well as earthly meanings. St. Mark captured the language of the time in the way he expresses the word repentance, in Greek, metanoia, or a complete change of mind. It was the changing of the mind, or repenting for a purpose, and that was to have one's sins forgiven so that one could receive blessings from God. And so John the Baptist came with this message. Baptism was and still is the outward sign that one has truly resolved to try to live a better life following after the example of Jesus Christ. Before John the Baptist came along, people used to immerse themselves or would go to a priest to be baptized to affirm their willingness to try to make a change. But John appeared and began to baptize others in the Jordan River as a witness to prepare them for a changed life. In church, we baptise in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit as a witness to the fact that we are trying to live a new life in Jesus' name. The people in the time of Jesus endured hardship and oppression and so they realised that if a change was to come, they must do some self-examination as a way to understand their contribution to the problems they were having and then see what changes they could make to actually bring about a solution. It was time to heed the call for changing minds and recognize that individual actions can contribute to corporate pain. This is not new. Long before the prophet Isaiah had called for repentance and a re-examination of life as the way to prepare for a new era. See Isaiah chapter 40. And the prophet Malachi had also changed, called for change and corporate redirection. Malachi chapter three, verses one to three. You cannot see change if you continue to do the same old things. We cannot see a different new year unless we all change. So how are we going to keep our resolutions this time? There is a reason people make resolutions in January. It's a month that is not quite done with the old year, but it is beginning to look with expectation to the new. It's a bit like driving. You really cannot ignore the rear view mirror, but you must concentrate most of all on what is in front. 
So to avoid the bumps you hit in the distance in the rear mirror, keep your eyes on what is coming up and avoid making the same mistakes we made before. If we take our eyes off the road and drive the same way we always have done, chances are that we'll continue to hit the same old bumps that we could have avoided. Albert Einstein, the great scientist and mathematician, is quoted as saying, insanity is people doing the same thing and expecting different results each time. But you know, as humans, we do have a tendency to do this. We fail to recognize properly the causes of our hardship and misery, and we refuse to change. And then we blame God and feel that our prayers are not being answered. We know very well that this or that is not good for us. Yes, we know that we need to change, but we make up excuses and convince ourselves that we deserve to keep on doing the old things. In the new year, do what John the Baptist invited the people of God to do. Change your mind so that you can receive grace. Let us all have the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And then you see, it has to be a total change of mind. In Greek, this word metanoia, it means the old things that were bringing pain and stagnation must be completely changed. This is not just change for change sake or novelty, but a purposeful change of mind and heart. Those things that we allowed to force themselves on us must be changed. We've all done it. We eat too much and don't exercise. We know we should do something constructive, but rather we lounge around and watch telly. We want to get involved more faithfully in church life and following Jesus, yet we spend far too much time and attention and even money on other things. We want to give a little more, but we find ourselves spending on ourselves. St. Paul captured this human dilemma well in his letter to the persecuted church in Rome. The apostle wrote, that which I'm doing, I don't understand, for I'm practicing what I don't want to do, and I'm not doing the very thing I want to do. I guess we've all been there. It's worried social scientists, and we even know that healthcare professionals who experience loads of stress in their lives can be hard drinkers and smokers when they know that it's not good for them. Why do we do things that we know is not good for us or for anyone else? As you can imagine, there are lots of theories and explanations for why it may be. Some say that we can understand why change does not occur if we examine the stages of change and get ready to deal with the challenges early on in each stage. Pay more attention to the process of change instead of closing our eyes and wishing that things were different. Interestingly, despite recognising the stages of change, we have to recognise human weakness too and include relapse as the, as the last stage because we all fall off the wagon sooner or later. The question is, will we get back on? Social scientists who have examined the change process have left something out of it though, and that something is God. You cannot change and nor can I if I try to do it on my own. Mark captured it well by referring to our tendency to be sinful. It is in the forgiveness of sins that we can begin to change. It is in the decision to say, I've given all my sins to Jesus, that we can say, lead me on, lead me on, for I cannot do it alone. There might have been people in the time of John who called for the tough to get going, but John was saying the opposite. Examine yourself. Recognize your weakness, repent of your sins, and obtain grace and mercy, liberation from all that holds you back. So how are we gonna keep our resolutions? Well, here comes a tough bit. It's by doing it together with others, having witnesses. John's baptism was a public act for the community and a witness by John himself that the individual in the presence of the community had affirmed and made a commitment to change his ways. It's hard to make a commitment to change and then try to do it alone, without witnesses, without help. Christian baptism for us, after the example of John, is a public declaration witnessed by all of us, that those among us have decided to try to change their ways and make a commitment to follow Christ, not to be perfect, but just to follow. 
with such public declaration, we hold each other accountable and we hold each other up in prayer. We might keep our resolutions better when we do it together as a community, as the beloved people of God. And we also keep our New Year's resolution by holding on to, on to our Lord, who has promised to be with us always. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but trusting God is essential because he does. Whether we fail or succeed, we know that God has promised to be with us always. There was a man called John Rowe. John Rowe was an Irish immigrant who went to the United States with little education at the age of 24. Like all immigrants, he took whatever job he could at first. He worked for the railways. In those uncertain days when keeping the body warm and fed kept many people up at night and made them anxious, Mr. Rowe tapped into his Christian faith and wrote the words of a well-known hymn. In those dreary days when it was hard to see the future, he wrote the hymn, God holds the future in his hands. Listen to what John Rowe wrote. Dread not the things that are ahead, the burdens great, the sinking sands, the thorns that over the path are spread, God holds the future in his hands. God holds the future in his hands and every heart he understands. On him depend, he is your friend. He holds the future in his hands. We know not what tomorrow hides, of sun or storm, of good or ill. We only know his dear hand guides and he will be our father still. His hand created earth and sky, the zephyrs and the storms that rage, and years to come and years gone by, to him are but an open page. Live close to him and trust his love, assured that while on earth we roam, whate'er may come, he bends above to guide his children safely home. As we enter into this new year, resolutions will be made and broken. Plans will be made and discarded. But it is good to know that if we trust and walk with God, we can never dread what is ahead. For our God holds the future in his hands. Thanks be to him. Amen. Now we're coming towards the time when we celebrate the new year, by the grace of God, I'm gonna lead you in some prayers. And during the prayers, I'm gonna light some candles and also ask you to join with me once again in the parts that are written in bold. Lighting our first candle. We say together, it is dark. We cannot see very far. Do not fear. God alone can see what lies ahead. We have suffered much, loved much, lost much. Do not fear. God knows your hearts and fears. We have dreamed and watched as dreams have floated away unfulfilled. Do not fear, God is with you. Lighting our second candle. Do not let fear and darkness overcome you. God has given the light for your path. The silence sometimes overwhelms us. The past still shouts loudly at us. Do not fear. God is with you. We light our third candle. Give your hearts and spirits to the Lord. Lord, we give our hearts and spirits to you this night. Let go of your fears. Place your trust in the Lord. Lord, we give our fears to you. Heal us, Lord. A 
as I light our fourth candle. I invite you to lift your hearts to the Lord. Give him all that is holding you back. And in return, open your hearts to receive his love. Now we, now we light our fifth candle. The darkness is banished. The light of God's love is with us. Look at the light, how beautiful it is to us, gathered in this darkness. Behold, says the Lord, I create a new heaven and a new earth, for the old has vanished away. In this new earth, we are called to ministries of love and service. Let these lights remind you that even one small candle in the darkness sheds light on someone's path. And where many candles are gathered, much light is given, much can be done. Praise be to God, who is the light and gives us the light of hope. Hallelujah. Amen. Go from this place, not into darkness, although it is night. Go into the light of God's eternal, inspiring love. Go to be those who bring peace, love, hope and joy. And God will always be with you. Amen. And let's share in the words of the grace together. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.